Hi, I'm Brian with Pioneer Builders, coming to you from beautiful Allen, Washington. Today we're going to combine building science and garage door tracks. Let's get into it. And we're inside, the garage door is closing behind us, so at least right off the bat you can see that garage doors do work with thermo tracks. You'll see what it really looks like, but it's actually more of a system than just a product. But let's talk about the building science behind it. Thermal energy can transfer in a variety of different ways. We're used to talking about radiation, uh, conduction, convection. What this really helps out with is actually that convection side of the equation or wind. Remember convection currents that happens with fluids where something can be moving around because there's a temperature or perhaps a pressure differential when it comes to the movement of those fluids. In this case, we'll take a look at the rails, but they're shaped in such a way that it tends to push the door more toward the jam, but it also has, instead of just a jam stop, like you'll see on a more conventional garage door system, it also has some weather stripping. And they do have some other products that I haven't installed here. Um, full disclosure, they did give this to me, I'm happy to have used it because I like using new things because I always learn something new. So one of the key things is you're sort of making the garage like semi-conditioned space. It may not be conditioned because you don't have HVAC in your, uh, in your garage, but maybe you do. Maybe you add some sort of radiant heat in here or you do some sort of a gas-fired heater. One of the key things that this helps with is comfort, honestly. If you work on vehicles or you like to do woodworking, things like that, and it's a more extreme climate, like you're in Minneapolis and you want to work in the wintertime, by virtue of sealing off those convection currents, you'll be able to be in your garage and be warmer. Or let's just say that you live in the hot, humid south, now you'll be able to keep out that thermal energy that's out in the atmosphere, but you'll also be able to keep out the latent heat or the amount of humidity that might be in the air. So let's digress for a little bit on the building science side. Latent heat really represents humidity that's in the air. And remember, in order for moisture to change phase, it needs to change how much energy it has. So if you have liquid water, you're putting thermal energy into it, what happens eventually? It evaporates. Now those molecules represent having more energy in them. Okay, so just try to keep that in your mind for a moment. How do humans cool themselves? Naturally, you would end up sweating, and when there's less energy in the air, you can perspire, and that reduces your body temperature. So you're taking your heat energy and rejecting it to the atmosphere. But if there's high humidity out there already, guess what? You don't have that heat sink for your body to give its heat off to. That's why if you have a super high dew point, it's actually dangerous because your body can no longer cool itself down. We're talking about comfort more. So inside your garage, if you can keep that humidity outside, you're gonna be more comfortable on the inside. If you're able to, able to control your temperature and humidity better inside, and you have more sensitive materials that you don't wanna to get too hot or too cold, that's another benefit of this. And then one last thing we'll comment on is, remember, the house is a system of systems. In our case, we put our water heaters in our garages, and in Washington State, oftentimes people are choosing to go with heat pump water heaters because of the building code. So now we have this thermal energy side of things with how much heat do you want to let in? How much do you want to take it out? And honestly, I've been thinking a lot about this and there are so many factors, I just haven't come up with a good answer. Soon though, we'll be getting our water heater installed in this house. We're filming it in the summer. I don't know if this will sell right away or if it will take a while but I'll be able to experience how the water heater performs depending on the temperature. So that does play into the garage door itself and we're gonna do another video on that. That addresses more of the conduction side of the equation. But if we can think about the convection part 
and the conduction uh, and the radiation, that'll be in the other video. Now we've kind of taken our building science knowledge and applied it in the real world, maybe to something we don't think about quite so often. So that's the theory behind it. That's a lot of those little details on the building science side. Now let's look at how this is made up, how it gets installed. Obviously it's installed now, but you'll see some clips that show how this was actually put together. Let's go over to the actual materials. Primarily what makes this system different is the tracks itself. Easy to remember because it's called thermo tracks, thermo and tracks. But it's the shape of these that's the key. Uh, I met out here with the installer and it installed just like other garage door rails. Of course it was new to them, but it was nice because it wasn't like reinventing the wheel. What makes this different really is this shape right here. Typically a, a track would be straight down. In this case there's a little bit of a recess. I'm going to guess it's about an eighth of an inch. It's just enough so that when the garage door closes where, there, where those rollers are, it pushes the door toward the jam. There's these, this piece of hardware here that you use to actually adjust in and out. And you want to be, I think it's about a sixteenth, uh, maybe it's an eighth to a quarter. Look at the instructions uh, for exactly how close to be. But you want to have it fairly close. And as the garage door comes down, again, it naturally pushes it closer without being completely tight. That's where this weather stripping comes in. So behind this uh, jam stop here, you can see the weather stripping and that is what actually seats against the garage door panel and then this trims it out. They do have a more high performance um, piece of weather stripping that goes on the bottom of it. I didn't use it here. And then there's also another thing that you can put on that helps keep rodents out and I would imagine just bugs in general. Let's go ahead and start wrapping up and pick up with that point about the rodents. It is amazing how much animals like either a cool place in the summer or a warm place in the winter. In fact, I've got a house that we're renting out right now and I just cleaned out both garages. There was an insane number of spiders and those little spider pod things that the little spiders grow in, it was pretty gross. If you can keep your house more air sealed, there's also the bug side of the equation. So we covered a lot in this video. Let's start wrapping it up. There was the building science part. Yes, you're able to keep the weather out. You're able to keep the convective currents out, but you can keep your body warmer or cooler. Right now it's probably about 80 degrees outside and in here it is tremendously more comfortable. Maybe you have certain things that are more sensitive. Maybe it's woodworking tools. Things that aren't in your house where it's true conditioned space, but maybe a space that you want to be more semi-conditioned. Maybe you work on your automobiles, you do mechanics, or you want your wood to be in a more temperate environment. It will be easier to keep your parameters in this area within range as opposed to a garage without this particular system. It's just more comfortable in general. So again, Thermotrax, I want to be super open. This was provided by them. I didn't get paid for it, but I think it's important for people to know when we're kind of sponsored by a video, but sift through it yourself. Use your own thinking ability. See if it has merit. I don't know what it costs, but it's not a whole lot of money. If you're building a custom home, if you're specifying, look into this product, make an informed decision. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed getting into this with me. Who would have thought we'd learned so much on tracks in one little video? I'm Brian with Pioneer Builders. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.